Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. the environs of San Francisco, California, it's time for Larry Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Better known as Bubbles, Um, a name that was given to you by uh, Paula Poundstone. Paula Poundstone, yes. Yeah, yeah. One day, what did she do? She just said, uh, she just named you Bubbles because you were so upbeat. No, I was trying to get her and another girl at the Holy City Zoo to go to a hot tub. And, uh, <laughs> oh, really? Th- yeah, that's, that, that's a true story. Yeah, I'm, she saw the bubbles in the hot tub, and she picked up on that, and then she just, it stuck, yeah. And it all because you, you got them into a hot tub? We were going to go, and then they backed out at the last second, but the uh, name stuck, stuck, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I you thought, were wow, t- I'm getting two girls into a hot tub. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, do, who was the other girl? Uh, it was a comic. I forget who it was. But they were ready to go, and I thought, oh, man, this is unbelievable. I can't, I can't believe it, but you don't remember the other person's name. No, I know. <laughs> I mean, the stuff you remember is amazing. I mean, you're like Rain Man. I've always been horrible on names. Oh, Really? Oh, okay. All right. Because I am, too. I once introduced my mother as what's-her-name. You know, <laughs> here, here's my mother, uh, blah, 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 and I couldn't. And I was young at the time. It wasn't like now where I expect that maybe I wouldn't remember her name. Yeah, well, you're plus uh, you're in a business where you meet a zillion people, so how can you remember her name? Well, it's also one other factor. I don't give a shit about other people. <laughs> yeah, so because of that, I don't remember their names, right? Babe Ruth couldn't remember names, so he just called everybody Judge. By the hey, way, judge. It, by the way, there was uh, there was this uh, thing. What's it, what's this? Uh, I'm trying to think of this disease that people get uh, where they are. Uh, it's kind of like oh God, I'm trying to remember what it was. See, I can't even remember the disease. <laughs> Alzheimer's? Uh, no, I was talking about it the other day. No, it isn't Alzheimer's, but it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, being, uh, uh, you know, retarded, but it's not. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what it was called. And supposedly, uh, Einstein had it, and uh, a couple other very famous people had it. And I went, gee, that's amazing, because you wouldn't think that they would have this this form of uh, of uh, what's the what's the what's the thing where you're kind of like distant and you, you you can't connect with people. You know what I'm talking autism? about? Autism. Autism. It's a form of Aspergers. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. See, I'm so tired yeah, today. Well, I can't uh, remember I think things I like Asperger. Couldn't find his own house, right? Who? Who couldn't find his own house? Uh, Einstein. Really? That he had. They painted. They had to paint the door in his house red. That's what I read about. Really? I didn't know that part of it. I mean, I knew he had Aspergers. Um, that was probably part yeah. of it. Yeah. And isn't it funny that I can't remember the name Aspergers when it's a very funny word? Aspergers. <laughs> you know, I, from here on in, I'll remember it by saying, "What is a hamburger made out of ass meat?" <laughs> be an Asperger, okay? Or what would you call somebody you don't like? Ah, you're an Asperger, you know. But uh, uh, I was amazed that certain people, famous people, have had Aspergers. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think that people are generally kind of bright, and then they kind of missing certain parts of their brain or something. Well, I think it it, it it's common to some geniuses. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, what have you? Anyway, so how have you been? How have your health been? My health has been good so far. So. <laughs> yeah. You have that uh, that uh, problem with your hernia. The nagging hernia, yes, which I keep putting off and off. And mine stung me last. Way. Mine stung me last night. Oh really? Yeah, it just stung and then it went away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I it's I don't think it's bad enough that I need to do anything about it. But you say you may have to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, some days it's really bad. Some days I don't notice it at all. But it's getting bigger. So. Well, mine. You don't have that big lump on your abdomen, so. Well, oh, I do. I have a big lump. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't hurt. You know. So, what the hell? Yeah, that's my. That, uh, so Maybe we should get it done together. It'd be hilarious. R- right. <laughs> yes. How long does the hospital stay on that? It's an outpatient. Mm-hmm. But uh, apparently, it is. You do feel really pretty sore for two weeks. Pretty sore? Yeah. Hmm. Well, then I'm not looking forward to that. You would have thought they would have made it easier now. Yeah, it's, it's gotten better because uh, they got this patch they put in there that they've been using for 30 years. Before that, the surgery used to, 50% of them would break within a year or something. But now it's pretty solid. It's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of like a webbing or something they put in there or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, I just hope that I die before I have to have that. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping to. Yeah. Do I really want to get this done if I'm going to die next year? Well, here's the thing. I got my my eyes. I keep telling my eye doc, keeps saying, you got to have your lids done. You have to have your lids done. And it, it, it wouldn't cost me money because it's a medical procedure. Okay. And and it's covered by insurance, by, uh, what do you call it, by Medicare. So uh, uh, I keep thinking about doing it, and they say, well, you know, we could also do the bags for 4000 you know. But, but that would have to be on your dollar. So oh. I'm thinking about it because I don't like the bags under my eyes. It makes me look too old, you know. I, I, it doesn't matter that it makes me look too old. It's just not attractive, Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think about getting that done and about getting the lids done, and then I go, what if I get the bags done? What if I get the lids done, and then I drop dead the next day? Yeah. And that's always a possibility at my age. You know, why did I go through all of that? You know, so well, I, I, keep, not. I keep putting it off and putting it off, saying, why do I want to look better? I'm, go- oh, I'm just going to drop dead anyway, you know, and then I'm going to look pretty bad. So, yeah. Because you know. <laughs> I ain't li- leaving a good-looking corpse. There's no question about that. You know. So. Uh, uh, but, uh, but does aging bother you? I mean, oh yeah, just this constant assault on the body and the way things getting. What about your face? Working. I haven't seen. I haven't seen your face lately. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it doesn't look good. Well, it never did. No. <laughs> you you always had that hang dog look. Although that's the uh the good thing about not being good looking is you don't have any that much to lose by getting older. I think if you're a really good looking person, getting older must be a total nightmare. Well, uh I you know, I always always felt that uh if you don't look good when you're young, you're not gonna look that bad when you're old. <laughs> that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you know, I mean, if you're really handsome, okay, let's say you're Tony Curtis. Do you see, see Tony Curtis at late age? Not not a good, not a happy sight to see. You know? Who is, is there anybody that's aged really well that looked good when they were uh, in their 80s? Uh, let me see here. Anybody that's aged really well. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren's held together pretty well. No. Uh, but has she had work done? I'm sure she must have. Yeah. But she was she was hot when she was younger. But oh, she's yeah. still good looking. She's a good looking older woman. Yeah. Yeah, there are people that age pretty well. You know? Do you know any comics who have aged well? 
<laughs> no, it's not, not our strong point. It, you don't think so? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but the thing is about comedy is that if you don't, if you age badly, it doesn't really matter because it's comedy. All right? If anything, maybe you'll look goofier when you get older. And so the comedy plays better than it did when you were younger. Yeah. I mean, you remember, I'll talk, uh, talk, let's talk for a moment about comics who were too pretty to be funny and managed to be funny anyway. And there's somebody you could name immediately because you work with him all the time. Dana Carvey. Yeah. I mean, Car Carvey, his big joke on stage was, I look like I'm a mannequin at Sears or whatever, you know. And then he put his hand out, you know, in a certain way like he was posing. And I always said, you know, here's a guy. He was really a good-looking kid, right? And he had very youthful looks about him. And yeah, I don't think not. He wasn't like a movie star, handsome, but he had that very boyish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quality, yeah. He had a very boyish quality, and yet he managed to use that to his advantage on stage, which is pretty terrific, you know. Yes, and he's he's aged well. He, has he? I mean, I haven't seen yeah. him lately, but I would imagine he has. You know, um, but he managed to 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 do. Uh, to to overcome the fact that he was so youthful looking, you know, but uh, but he did he certainly didn't have a face for comedy. Yeah, he looked, when he was thirty, he looked like he was fourteen. I so. mean, you, I mean, what else could you go into? The sad, I have that sad look. You have that sad hang dog dog about. look. Yeah, yeah. And and it pr works perfectly on stage. I mean, you you play into it beautifully. In fact, oh. I said many cases that that you did so well on the Letterman show both times. And the reason you did so well was because it's a close up medium, and your face in close up is even funnier than if you saw it on stage. <laughs> I'm serious, because you do these takes and the nah, and the hangdog look and so on, and it really worked on Letterman. And I said, by God, you know, he's this is his medium. And then you yeah, waited. It worked, it worked better on TV than in a club. You make a little gesture with your face. It doesn't always show up in a club, but on the camera, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you were perfect for that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you were so successful at it the first time, you waited 20 years to go back again. Wait 21 years. <laughs> 21 years, was it? It's 21 years. Why did you, the day. Why'd you wait that long? The same reason you don't have a, an iPhone? I'm not good at following up on things, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean... I don't you, like to. I just thought if they like me, they'll have me back. I don't like to make calls and try to sell myself. I hate that. Yeah, but they wanted you back. They said, as soon as you get another five minutes, just give us a call, and we'll have you back on. <laughs> by by the time you got well, I think in... I, I did send them a five. Apparently, they didn't like it. So. Oh, really? And then you just gave up? It wasn't like I did. I did try. So. Oh, you did try. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll buy that. You tried. Yeah, I tried. Oh, God. That's amazing. But, but I like the twenty one the twenty one year record's good. I like that. It's like a like a locust. <laughs> did they make a big deal it's out a of it? Every twenty one years. I can't remember. Did he make a big deal out of it? Like the last time he was here was twenty years ago? He didn't know he didn't, but uh he did talk to me on stage after they turned the lights down and his uh he was really nice and his staff freaked out. They said, oh, my God, he never talks to anybody. That's unreal. Yeah, yeah. Well, he probably found you really funny. Well, I later found out that I reminded him a lot of George Miller, who he loved, his old friend George Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who died. Uh, who died and uh, had... Uh, George Miller was like, he'd have three horrible jokes and one great joke, but uh, he was funny. Well, isn't it... Good to have three bad jokes and one good one, because then yeah, when the good one hit, when the good one hits, it one. hits harder than it would if you just followed up with three good jokes. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you work your act that way so that you t- time certain jokes because, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I try to give them in an order so they kind of, you know, you, comics that are real, I'm good at that, can, they can kind of make their act ebb and flow and it works much better and I just, I never was able to put that together well, but I've tried, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know what jokes work and what jokes don't work as well. Yeah. And so you don't you put them in a certain order so that the, the heavy ones land harder because the one before it was lighter? Right, and then you always try to save the big one for the end. And By the way, people are listening right now. You don't understand that this is all a science, wouldn't you say? Uh, kind of, yeah. You're assembling something, and uh, so it works properly, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you're... you're, you're, you're you're balancing things against each other. I mean, comedy is a science in a lot of ways, and you have to know how to how to how to how to mix the different chemicals together so it works well. So. Yeah, and really good comic, and because uh, all crowds are different, if mm-hmm. they're able to kind of mix their act up, if it's a different kind of a crowd, and I could never do that. I never asked you this. Who's the best comic you ever saw? The best comic I ever saw was probably, hmm. I think in his prime, it was a short, it was a short window. I thought uh, I thought Kinnison was was amazing. But he was amazing. He was. Um, and it didn't last too long. But I, the first time I saw him, I watched him. He did an hour, and when he got done, I thought I, I thought I'd been there five minutes. It was that good. It was it, it was too rich a mixture is what the problem was. In other words, once you had seen him, you maybe didn't want to hear him scream again. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you of the screamers. There were the, the comedians who scream always do well because they always become headliners faster because nobody wants to follow them. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to follow a comedian who screams, and you don't want to follow a comedian who plays a musical instrument. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that that I, was the... Oh, you're following... The middle act's got a guitar. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the comedian who made it the fastest that I've ever seen, and also faded out the fastest, Bob Goldthwaite. Or some people know him, Bobcat Goldthwait. And he was a sensation in San Francisco. And he came yeah, out. Not, not that when Boston, I guess he was doing all right. When he came out here, he went from like an opening act to a headliner, literally like in two months. Well, I think my show helped him. Oh, yeah, for you sure. Know. But he was, I remember he was, he didn't have the, he was headlining and he barely had 30 minutes. Because what, what, what being on my show did for a comic, and I think you'll agree with this, was that if you play in front of a strange audience, you have to somehow go on stage and explain who you are with very short strokes so you can then do your comedy. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. So you establish the character. They didn't. A person who appeared on my show, a comedian who appeared on my show, didn't have to do that. Right, they in, already knew. In, in other words, Goldthwait comes on, screams like crazy. If you don't know what he's about, it takes you a while to get used to that and to understand it. But if you heard it on the radio for a couple of days, and it was always funny to you, once he comes out on stage and starts doing that, he's got you from the get-go. And that's why comedians did well after doing my show. Not because they were on my show, but because they established the character on my show. Yeah, and he, uh, God, he just set this town on fire. I remember that. Yeah, well, because I've asked you that question about, you know, what's the joke you use in your act to establish who you are to an audience who doesn't know who you are? And I think you said it was the joke about your... uh, uh, Stolen identity, yeah. Stolen identity, yeah. Uh, that that then establishes you to the audience, and they they know who you are and get who you are, which is pretty terrific. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. It, it blew by. It just blew by. Blow being the operational word here. 
<laughs> anyway, talk to you again next week. It wouldn't be a week without you. It wouldn't be. It's always fun. Yeah, so don't die on me between now and next week. I'll try to stay alive. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Larry Bubbles Brown, the great, the legendary Larry Bubbles Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, who's a regular on this program, and uh, we love having him here. And we love having you here. Uh, we're glad you joined us tonight. Um, I, uh, I went out and took a big walk today again. I, was, I, I, I take a walk every day. or I probably won't do one tomorrow because it's going to be raining. But uh, today I, I exhausted myself. I mean, it, you know, I, I find it difficult for me to really push myself into stuff. But I, uh, I got, I went straight down uh, one street that I never go down and went to the park. And then I found the steps that went up. And the problem with steps in me these days is I, I slip on steps. Um, I, I don't have the balance that I once had, okay? And so I have to go up them very carefully. And, and sometimes I move my feet sideways. So I'm going up them sideways. So I, you know. So I don't have the edge of my foot over the step. And so I had to go about three of these. And uh, then uh, I finally got to the top, and then there was a path leading upwards. Now, you know, there were places where I could go down into this creek area and climb down onto some rocks and so on. I can't do that anymore. And it bothers me that I can't do that anymore. And it has nothing to do with my strength, because strength-wise, I can do it. Okay, but it's balance that's the problem, that I don't have my sense of balance anymore than I once had. Oh, this whole show should be about how getting old is sucks, okay? But anyway, I went up and into the woods, and all of a sudden, I'm lost in Central Park. I've had this happen before, and uh, so I, uh, but I knew how to get out because the best way is that you just keep going down, 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 and eventually you're, you're out of it. But you can get into these woods where you go, where the hell am I? Now, you're in Central Park, you know. Uh, there isn't very much room for you to move without finally getting out of the park. But the one time I did it, it panicked me. I had to use my phone to find out where I was exactly, okay? So I did that walk today, and it exhausted me. And I come back, and I, I have this thing here. That, that I uh, that I use that is like uh, uh, you've seen this on the on the on the watches right oh damn it here let me let me just try and turn that on there you see and that uh, the outer ring is uh, is just uh, I guess amount of motion and then in the middle that you can't see because of the fact that I have a green screen up uh, that is the uh, that is me having walked today, and then there's the uh, there's um, standing up and so on. I and I closed most of the rings. The rings are almost closed, but I walked a lot, and I and I walked up these hills and everything. And I would have thought that it would have said, "Hey, you've done 30 minutes of exercise," because I was I was ex exerting myself. Anyway, I came back, and my back was hurting, and I I just I, I wore myself out. Uh, it was a bad year this last year because I couldn't get any exercise. And now that I am, my body says, uh-uh, you don't deserve it, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, we take calls on this program from a group of people we call a citizen panel. And if you want to be part of it, all you have to do is go over to gabnet.net. That's G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. That's our home. That's our uh, web page. And then over on the right-hand side, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a, a, a column. And in the middle of that column, you'll see the word Zoom. Click on that, and it will automatically have your computer dial us. All you have to make sure is that you have your camera on and things like that. And you're ready to go, and you can call us. And we always like to get new listeners. Also, there's a new thing. That I, every, I, when I watch YouTube, everybody I watch on YouTube says, uh, and be sure to hit the subscribe button. 
And I never do that. And so I've been joking about the subscribe button the last couple of nights, and I went up to, I went up to almost uh, 1,219 people. I gained about five people, right? Okay. There's something that, that YouTube is doing to screw with me because I just went on and I lost five people. I lost all the people I got. Now, what is the problem with that? So everybody who's watching right now, hit that subscribe button. Just hit it, okay? It's on the page, okay? If you're watching us on YouTube, hit, uh, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell. The bell will tell you when, uh, notify you whenever we're on so that I can be annoying, okay? But anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, did anybody just hit the, uh, the subscribe button? Um, let me see here. No, nobody hit the subscribe button. Well, fuck all y'all. Anyway, where are we? Let me, uh, let me uh, go uh, and do this, get these people on. Oh, there are a lot of people waiting to come on, okay? Uh, oh, by the way, this is the Memorial Day weekend, and I was wondering whether I should do a show on Monday which is Memorial Day, because we do a show, a little pop-up show at 4 o'clock. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a try. And if there isn't very many people calling, then I won't, I won't do it. But uh, I won't continue it, okay? But I'm going to try, because I have nothing to do with my pathetic life. Nobody's coming over here, right? You know? So uh, we're, uh, you know, you know we'll see if we do it or not. Anyway, let me just admit everybody here to the panel and uh here they are they're starting to join it now like crazy uh let me see here let me see who we got let's see here we got uh, josh wheeler and we got trucker steve and we got charlie wallace coming in here and alan is coming in and um jeff stein uh, he hasn't clicked his button yet so we don't know where the hell jeff stein is I'm drinking my coffee tonight. Mm. Mm. Alan, are you there? I'm trying to figure out what happened here. Well, maybe. Uh, mirror my video, touch up. Where am I at? I just, <laughs> I don't. Alan, your camera isn't on. I noticed. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Your camera isn't on. I can cue you. Wait a minute, uh, hold on a second. Let's see, ask to start video. That might cue you somehow how to do it. I don't know. John Larkin is uh, calling us. Uh, Jeff Stein is having a hard time getting on tonight, but I have admitted him. Cameron isn't on. I noticed. Thank you. Oh, now, now we... now. Oh, now. I, I, I don't know. You know, it always asks you when you log on, do you want to go with video? Well, no, I got on Zoom because I don't want to be with video. What a stupid comment. What do you mean? Do you want to be on with video? You say yes. I, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I even have internet, Alex. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, but I just, you know, you know, you showed your watch just a few minutes ago on your monologue mm -hmm. and the little pink ring tells mm -hmm. how many gays are are coming towards you <laughs> i'm kidding i don't know i've never seen an eye watch that has a pink ring in it but um let's see and, and i like your i like your comment that you needed to use your phone to figure out where the fuck you were in central park this was a couple of years couple San couple of years back i i, yeah, I, I couldn't San Francisco. i couldn't figure out how to get out of the park and so I had to look and see where I was in the park, and then I saw where there were paths and so on on the uh, on the on the map that I had, and it got me out of there. Today I didn't have that problem. I pretty well knew that if I just kept going down, I where I would wind up. You know. I went to San Francisco about four years ago. Didn't know where I was at. Thought I was on some street, looking for an address. Mm -hmm. And I hit the map button, and it pops up a map of San Francisco, not where I was at in San Francisco. And so it says you're in San Francisco, and I'm like, okay, I knew that. What damn street am I on? Hmm. Anyhow. Well, well, we should have your problems. Hello, Josh. How are you? Friday night, you usually Good. join us. How are you? 
I'm good. How are you? Getting ready for the big Memorial Day weekend? Sure. <laughs> Josh is always so excited. Yeah, he, 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 he the joie de vivre is amazing. Yeah, but uh, hold on a second. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my temperature down here a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm turning on the air conditioner. There we go. Is it on? My air conditioning just came. How can you be having a storm, <laughs> rain tomorrow, and you're you're warm in the house? Well, my problem is here in the studio. It gets quite hot. Because oh, okay. I have all this equipment. And so oh. even though the rest of the house may be cool, the hottest room in the house is this room. Uh, so I turn on the air conditioner to keep myself comfy. Okay. okay. You know, it's not oppressively warm, but, you know, I have a tendency to doze off now, and I don't want to get too drowsy from too much heat. You know. So No anyway. comment that somebody in the, in the group might mm. doze off too. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here comes uh, Kathleen's husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Kathleen, are you out there tonight? Do you want to talk to your husband? She she, she sent me a uh, I am, an instant message or whatever you call it, Facebook Messenger, about an hour ago. So she's alive. Well, I am her back and tell her her husband's on. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Tony? All right, it's miserable out though here out. Really? I hear it raining like crazy. You know, so, you know, you people complain about everything. If it's too hot, it's too hot. Yeah. If it's warm, yeah, too, really if it's snowing too much, it's snowing too much. And if it's if it's come on, it's <laughs> raining. You know, I, I went to put the numbers in, so my brother took me to the candy store, and I had my shorts on, <laughs> and it was like, "Aren't you going to change?" I was, I was ready in the car. I said, "Oh my god, it was pouring out. It's like raining." I, I was going to put some short. I was going to put shorts on today, and then I uh, tried to put, tried to put them on, and these it's were, raining all month. Here. Yeah, I tried putting on my shorts today, and they wouldn't fit because I've gained too much weight. So I have to buy some new shorts. It's not too bad. Well, I mean, you know, it's just it, they were tight on me anyway. Even when I was lost a lot of weight, so uh, you know. It's Is just, my wife calling Alex later? We're going to have you over for coffee. I heard that last night. I was laughing. I almost fell off the bed watching the uh, basketball game. <laughs> okay. You were watching the basketball game. I had, you, I had the game on mute and I had you on. I was, oh, my God. Yeah. I sent her a message to come on on. Your husband's on. Yeah. We're so having a fight. I haven't first got a fight. reply. You're having your first fight, are you? I, won't. I don't know. Like, I remember my father used to say that. Yeah. Whatever it was, he was always wrong. I said, yeah. what are you fighting about? It's probably over the coffee. Decaf or regular? You know what depressed me today? What's what, Alex? You get depressed? <laughs> yeah, really. uh, no, what depressed me today was I watched... Uh, Do you ever watch the Kaminsky Method? I didn't see that yet. It's a great, yeah. show, great show on Netflix, right, Charlie? Yep. Yeah, well, I love it. Well, I just the, haven't had a chance to watch it this year yet. The third season was just posted. It's yeah. only six <gasps> episodes. Oh, rats. And the last episode... Which wraps it all up. It's only like twenty three minutes long. Oh, that's short. Yeah, I mean it's good. You know, it's good. It's it doesn't have uh, Alan Arkin on it this year. He yeah. uh, they start off the season with him having died. They don't say how he died, but the character is dead. But it, uh, it, it they did a good job of of keeping the show going. You know, I was very happy with it. So Alex, I was going to ask you: Do you think Phil got to? Did he? Is he still lost? I was laughing when you said he got lost yesterday with the guns in the car. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, well awesome. if, uh, do you have any? Uh, uh, you know, I love. I love you I, said I, even I, Hitler has a girlfriend. You said I love my <laughs> autofocus. What is wrong with this stupid camera? Look at the autofocus now. Hmm. What? Oh, how does he get? Mind. I can see him getting lost, Alex. Like you said, can you see him with all those guns in the back? What we should <laughs> Alex, Alex yeah. didn't say he got lost. I said he got lost. Oh, you got okay. Yeah, we talk almost every day. So, yeah, yeah, they're they're married. Oh, they're he, married. And, he and about. Yeah, yeah just they're about. married, just like you and Kathleen are married. Yeah, just about. Yeah. So, um, um, how's the marriage going, Tony? Good. You know, I was so upset today because I slaved over a nice hot meal and she went out with her boyfriend. She, I didn't know she's cheating <laughs> on you? Exactly. Can you, I don't blame her, but you know what? You think she'd come home and eat first, then go out. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, and you made a nice meal. I did. I yeah. did. I, I you kept it. You kept I, it warm for her. But how long can you keep it in the kitchen in the oven? And no one's coming home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. It's all right. I told you she was no good. I said, I was more about people like you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, uh, if you're out there, Kathleen, your husband's here. We want. You, we'd like you to talk to him. Uh, this is a hello, hello to uh, hello to uh, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. How are you? All right. How you doing? Yeah. What's happening out there in your neck of the woods? Uh, not much. Just people shooting each other. Okay. Oh, Where did yeah. that term ever come up with? That come from? Neck of the woods. Al Roker. Oh, really? <laughs> No, uh, oh, no, not Al Roker, the guy before him. Oh, yeah, the guy in the morning. Uh, uh, my mother's one. What's his name? The heavy guy, the white guy. Hello, Willard, Willard uh, uh, what's his name? Who used to do the birthday, so if you hit 100 or something, he used yeah, to call you out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Willard, uh, Willard, Willard Scott. Scott. Willard Scott. Willard Scott, yeah. Yes. Here's yeah, the weather, and you, uh, but uh, what he would do is when he, went to, when he went to the local station, <laughs> he would say, Here's the weather in your neck of the woods. That's what it was. Yeah. But I think that term is an old term that goes back before Willard Scott. And Take I have school. no idea what it means. Do woods have mm -hmm. necks? Yes. Take yes, school. Alan. Kathleen <laughs> just responded that she'll be on to see her husband in a minute. <laughs> and Kevin, what are you doing? Your skin is all <laughs> orange. trying to keep a straight face. No, no his skin isn't all orange. On my computer, it is. Everybody yeah, else. Mine too. It's orange, but that's probably because of the lighting in the room. Do you know? Uh huh. Oh, oh, oh uh -huh. now, now he's. Well, he might have gotten some sun. He does yeah. live in California. Well, that that's a lot of sun. He's almost as orange as you know. And Mr. and of Keith course, and of here. course, uh, um, uh, I was spraying a lot of redwood okay. stain today. Maybe. I oh wow. Well. Uh, and by the way, John Larkin is looking very pale. So what the hell? You know, it all works itself out <laughs> somehow. Here we go. Here, here we go. Uh, here. Uh, hold on a second, Tony. She's got to turn on her audio here. Ladies and uh, gen <laughs> gentlemen, here is Mrs. Tony. Uh, Golf a bit. Uh, 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 Miss, Miss, <laughs> Mrs. Magno. Hello, Mrs. Magno. Thank How you. are you this evening? I'm another good. Mom now. This is great. Listen, your husband, your husband told me some, some some really disturbing news that he made dinner for you tonight. And we'll tell her. You, you go ahead. Well, I, I tried to keep it warm, but I told Alex, you went out with your boyfriend. I said, you need to come home first, eat, then go out. <laughs> Even my brother's like, where is she? She's got a baby. He says, I know it. She got smart. I said, yeah, but I come over. I cook here. Her and then Alex said, he warned me about you. Said, oh, I said, oh, God. Well, we talked about Alex. Oh, we'll talk about him later when you come home. Okay. Her excuse is my date's in California. So, oh, that's okay. You know. That's why she's never coming back, Alex. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I mean, I'll hang a picture up of what might have been. It, it, is this officially the the divorce? No, oh, I don't want to avoid that. Costs okay. money. No. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting divorced. I'm buying us a nice house in the country, wherever oh, Tony okay. wants. But you already have a house in the country. Yeah. No, that's on the ocean. That's not the country. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. We want. Yeah, I want. I want to move up to Woodstock. That's what I told my brother. That's really? What I like around. Really? They're not having I like the country, actually. I'm tired of all these people going through my garbage in the front of the house. It's ridiculous. You put out the bottles and they're in there like it's like rubberneck. That's how it was in Tracy. Yeah. They do that over here. I got to put the yeah. bottles now in a garbage bag, like a colored bag, so they don't know what's inside it because they make a mess. Yeah, it's not. I it's, found it's the lady not, in the backyard once, it's, Alex. It's not colored. You don't use that term anymore. Oh, you're yeah. right. <laughs> it's a black thing. <laughs> That's really what it is. I got a whole sack of them. <laughs> My mother used to yell. She used to say, "Put them in the bag." So put them in the colored bag, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never forget when she was in the hospital, Alex, and there was a colored lady in the room with her, and she was a little crazy. There was a and colored woman the in the. Hey, wait a minute. There was a color was she, Tony? Tony? She was black. <laughs> And my mother made friends with her because she, she was crazy, the lady, but she was nice. Mm -hmm. And then the nurses used to come in because they weren't paying attention to her. If you took the color, if you wanted to take the colored woman out to dinner, what kind of food would you get her? That's a good Blue. Thing. Huh? 
I Lou. Just, no, 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 wait Italian. Let him answer. What kind of food would you get her? I was going to say chinks. Today. That's right. <laughs> yes, I love my chinks. <laughs> and my, she said, I'll drop those people like a hot Folks, if you're watching us right <laughs> now and, and you're thinking you're going to ruin my career, by, well, by, like my you know, with, with, she was with so innocent stuff. in everything she said. It was this funny. is Tony, and he's from Queens, and quite frankly, he's a moron and he doesn't know better. Let me just use that as an excuse. Yeah. That's fine. That's kind of like me frame drill. You have me pretty much pegged. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the world according to me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. And Tony, Tony, I'm I'm gonna one more uh, 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 Facebook message, and I'm I banning know, you. I'm, I'm banning. I, I don't you. blame you. I told Shecky, you warned him about me, and he didn't listen. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. No, but I mean, you just. I you, know. I do this to my brother. He, he just can't write. He can't write. He writes like one little paragraph. That's what my sister And then he writes another little paragraph. And write another. And another little paragraph. And another little paragraph. And the trouble is that every time a new paragraph comes through, it comes on my watch and goes down. Uh, yeah, she gets it on the thing. So and now you're driving me crazy. That's what she says. Okay. Yeah. So only write me if it's like, uh, oh, I don't know, you're getting a divorce from Kathleen. Okay, oh, okay. I want to know that. <laughs> Okay. The little details, like what should I do? Yeah, yeah. Can I That'll never happen. Anyway, um, uh, J Josh, hello, Josh. You know, hello. What I, you know what I was saying the other night, Josh, is that the problem with the program lately is there's nothing to talk about because really the move, the news is kind of sparse and slow. Do you feel that? No, I wouldn't say there's nothing to talk about. Well, I mean, like I you know. We just I could, think there's happenings hmm? going on that a lot of people that call here just choose not to talk about. That would be like, nice. like what? Well, I mean, you know, you have a couple things, I suppose. I mean, I know the Trump will be back in the news soon. I think he's going to come out of hiding and make a speech. Sound like an idiot, but make a speech nevertheless. You've got... Uh, my apparently, I mean, I was pretty busy today, but my understanding was they voted not to have a January 6th investigative commission. Right. Looks like that's not going to happen. That was. Well, they, they didn't. News. They didn't vote. They filibustered it out yeah. of, so they never got to vote. Right. Right. But uh, I mean, I know when there was one day last week, maybe six or seven days ago. I mean, I know the. The court agreed to hear two cases uh, that'll both be the, the largest cases in decades for both, one involving gun rights and the other involving abortion. So they haven't heard them yet. They're going to put them on the schedule and hear them in the next term, was my understanding. Was, you know, they got accepted. Yeah, so. but that's not news right now. That's the problem. You know, I mean, but, what, you know, when you were talking about, about the uh, 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 Republicans fighting to not have that commission, to investigate what went on during nine, during the uh, 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 January sixth, uh, all I could say to myself was, you know, they can get, they get committees and uh, to to go with almost anything, you know. Oh, let's have a committee about uh, about uh, tweets, you know, and they can get that together. But they don't want to let this happen. And well, I mean, this is something that happened to all of them. Their lives were in jeopardy. Yeah, but if, if, if they do a committee, they, the, the Republicans can just say, oh, it's just the Democrats trying to go after us. This was going to be a bipartisan commission where they weren't going to be, you know, they were mm -hmm. going to be ex-politicians that were chosen by each side. That, that carries much more weight, you know. Yeah, but, what, you know, I mean, the fact that they didn't want to hold a commission on what went on is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> How many I fucking that, Fazi commission or, or investigation do they have? About fucking what ten of them, and they they drag Clinton in, into it for like oh yeah hours. oh yeah Benghazi, yeah yeah. We should I'm, do that I mean, Trump. Put Trump I think up that there. You also have, you know, you have Paul Ryan the last day or two on a some sort of a media tour. I I don't know what he's promoting. Something. He was at the Reagan Library. You know, but he's been out the last few days and, uh, you know, he's sort of trying to make it sound like 
all this Trump stuff is a mistake, even though he really won't use the name and, you know, how it's not good for a political party to, you know, be beholden to a person and not to a set of ideas, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, you know, he's kind of on that tour, which I find ridiculous and disingenuous because he's one of the people that made this possible, you know, and then he got out of town right after mm-hmm. yep. because he knew that it was a mistake and that it was bad, but he didn't have enough balls to just say that at the time. In fact, he, you know, openly supported Trump and went around telling us how great it was going to be and, and all this. And then he stuck around just long enough to realize, well, that was really stupid. Yeah. And then he just ran away and he still won't come out and say what he really thinks, even though he's not running for anything or he doesn't need Trump for anything. I mean, he, you know, there. Well, I don't know who needs Trump for anything anyway. I mean, what well, is this paying obedience to I mean, Trump? I, I mean, in my opinion, and in your opinion, no one does. But in the opinion of many Republican lawmakers, or or those who are going to run for office and want to be a Republican lawmaker, in many of their minds, they feel they need Trump desperately, and they need his people. Now, our hope has to be that all of this you know, is going to lead to their downfall in the way that it's sort of predicted to. Who knows what will happen. However, but, however, you know, there's a possibility the Democrats will fuck the whole thing up and they well, won't. I mean, that's always a possibility. You know. They have a pretty high hope, track record of that kind I of stuff. I hope he becomes but, Peter Frampton of uh, politics. Because remember in the 70s, Peter Frampton had this incredible career. And then like within two years, he couldn't even... You know, put well. Two thousand people in, in all logic. T- Donald Trump should have no career right now. Number yeah. one, he was the least popular president. What? Of practically the century. All right. You know, when it comes to polls, uh, uh, you know, and you you had a lot of other great candidates for that, for that, uh, bra- for those bragging rights, but he also did a terrible job as president and then he lost yes by uh, he, he lost by 5 million votes okay he lost the house and yeah. the senate and yeah. the presidency yeah yeah so what did he <laughs> what did he do right that they should care about whether he comes back to dodge or not well i think what the right people i think of- what he does right in their in their mind and in their opinion and in their interpretation is two things that he will or that he does turn out votes that normally do not vote people who normally do not vote and they feel that he will raise more money than they could raise without him a lot more money so i think they feel like he he creates turnout and he creates cash flow and And if they go and if they go against them that they'll get blasted yeah and so and they have tied themselves to him so much in order to suck up to get those otherwise non-existent votes and that otherwise non-existent cash flow that i mean once they're on the train they can't get off because it doesn't i mean it it doesn't stop anywhere just you know they you know so they're like if we if we stay on you know, the, yeah, but he didn't. The thing is, and if we th- jump off, we're going to get hurt. I mean, they, the thing you know. is, if he was as they imagined him to be, wouldn't he have been able to get more uh, senators in the Senate, more Congress people in the Congress, and instead, none of that happened? Well, I think that's fair, and I think that's how you and I interpret it. But they just obviously don't see it that way i mean i, mean, I just they don't think see, that's I, their ticket back i don't see where the guy has any real power uh, uh, he has power in their mind you, right he's I mean, got but, millions of people that <laughs> love him regardless right i mean I, I look i don't see it overall and i don't see it in the popular <laughs> form and i think the election you know demonstrated that mm. and biden has not done anything to you know lessen the chance of his re-election so to speak it's it's super early i know i'm just saying his his uh approval ratings and those kinds of things are you know pretty decently doing pretty well i mean it's not outstanding it's not certainly not what trump was 
so you know i mean he's he's doing fine he's not pissing anyone off he, you know the economy is recovering pretty well uh, a lot of businesses are booming i mean there's you know the the covet issues are slowly fading away and yeah. and i mean you know so he's not doing anything and biden's not gonna well, do anything i mean to biden so biden. i don't see it either but it's that's not what they think but think about this i mean it's only what uh f- five months of, how long has biden been president about four and a half months let's say okay january right yeah january so, i said maybe january 20th, may 20th is four months it's four months in four months he took COVID and almost completely eradicated it. Yep. And and that was something that Trump would not have had the ability to do. Right. You know, or even care well, about he, doing. He, he, I think he had the he had the ability. In other words, he had the power. He just refused. He just wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. You know, I mean, he just he just yeah. you know he just wouldn't do it because because he didn't care because there's no. Benefit to Trump. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in or at least he didn't interpret it as there was. There, there would have been. This is what is so stupid about him is there would have been benefit to Trump if he would have just done the job. It would have been beneficial to him because people would have seen it and they would have appreciated it. Probably would have got him reelected. I guess I yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know, but he didn't do anything. He just did what Trump did, which was say, "What's in it for me?" And when the answer was, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Not much. He said, well, fuck that, you know, next. <laughs> so, Al, I mean, that's... Al, Alan has his electronic hand up. I, yeah, I hit a button somewhere. I see that and I moved. Hollywood Square is moving. So if all the Republicans believe that the election with Trump was stolen, mm-hmm. how about the Republicans that actually got elected? Was, was, was that a mistake, too? They won't say that. Yeah. I mean, you know, they certainly won't. I mean, you, you know, they're, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, if none the of them are going to want. That would be corrupt for them. Meanwhile, Kathleen was laughing about something. Was it something to do with what we were talking about or something was happening there in your in your house? Oh. She's getting texts. Huh? <laughs> Why did you just? You She's not, not coming home again. You, 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 Another late night. <laughs> <laughs> Politics is fun. You don't want to tell us what the no. (laughs) You know, politics bore me. So as soon as someone started talking about train stuff, I started playing. Oh, what were you playing? (laughs) What was that? What was that you were playing? Would you care to share with the rest of us? Come on, get your head above there. It looks like you're doing something to somebody. Just get- oh, my God. <laughs> is, he, is he being pretty quiet now? I mean, Trump seems to be. I mean, do we think he's well, still? Uh, he's he's been still making news. He's uh, he's been. <laughs> Nobody's being that stupid guy. He's been. Uh, he's been around. He's been doing a couple of things. Uh, yeah, not. Right, he's he's doing what he can do without his, yeah. you know, social media outlets. He puts out right, right. statements or whatever. Yeah, uh, it, it, he's gonna give a speech somewhere, and I, I can't remember like a state Republican convention, you know, a meeting in one of one of the states. I, I don't remember which one. Mm. I'm pretty sure like next week or or something yeah. like that. So, you know, he'll be back to his. His tactics, I guess, we'll see. I don't know. I mean, he's stayed mostly out of it for a little while, which has been refreshing. But I, I don't, I don't think. Why do you think he's stayed? Surely he'll do something holiday weekend. Yeah, oh, God forbid he says something on Memorial Day. You know what I was going to say to you, too? What I found, I know this has nothing to do with Trump per se, but I was watching a basketball game, and I was watching some of the news coming out of it. And Alex, at a lot of the games, there's been a lot of, like, racial things said to the players the Blake they're getting spit on racial remarks from the crowd it was, I mean I'm not going to blame Trump but if you think about throw, it throw popcorn yeah. at a player they threw the popcorn at uh, Russell Westbrook oh, somebody that's, spit that's, at Trey Young uh, that's horribly, uh, Trey, that's point horrib- that's horribly dangerous uh, throwing popcorn on people but then, 
But I mean, you know what I'm thinking now? Look at all the hatred since Trump has been elected and left office. He didn't have this like four or five years ago. Yeah, but, this, but popcorn, that's going too far. I mean, they threw popcorn at it. What? <laughs> Boston's a rough area. Who was it? Who was it? Uh, I can't remember. I think maybe it was Colbert who said that um, this is terrible what this guy did. I mean, that's uh, $10 stadium popcorn. <laughs> I mean, how tell stuff? Tony is a native New Yorker when he calls Boston kind of dangerous, <laughs> rough. I hate like, well, I hate it because well, I don't like to lose that. But I actually was a New York's people. trying to keep its roughness, but it's kind of hard. We're not. We're trying to get that murder rate up. You know, we're starting. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're trying. trying to, well, our mayor thinks it's safe in the trains, but they're getting clipped every day. Alex, I was getting jumped. <laughs> I mean, come on, they're just not arresting them, really. Yeah. I'm afraid to go to Shecky's by train now. I may have to take the uh, taxi over. I was going to. I was thinking of going to Shecky's tomorrow, and I'm still too too lazy to get out of the house to do it. But you know, I get, I, you know we're the similar. We get settled in. Like I like, my, but tomorrow's going to be a rainy day too. So tomorrow's it's going to be, like, be a rainy day. But next weekend, I think I'm going to go out and see. Him. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a year. Okay. Maybe you see. Uh, yeah, that's right. You can maybe go for Chinese food over there. He said the restaurants open. <laughs> what type of food? What kind of food? Oh, the Chinese. That's awesome. He's got Tony a nice Alex, uh, he's got a good place by his house. He's got, they get good noodle soup. A real, I, I don't know. There's this is one place he took me to a while back when we when I first came back to New York, and it was it's in it's in uh, Flushing. Yeah, I know which it is, is the Chinese thing. section of town now, Flushing. It's like Chinatown. And, uh-huh. It's like, I know where it is. It's the 58 last stop. I know where it is. It's like China. If you want to buy, if you want to buy a huge turtle to have for dinner, that's where they, you go they, buy it. You know. But anyway, they, anyway, he took me to a Chinese restaurant there and introduced me to something which I've now been addicted to, and that's soup dumplings. Oh, those are good. Yes. Are they good? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they they have a couple dumpling places here that only sell those different kind of dumplings. So good. But the soup dumpling. Yeah, the soup. Yeah, because yeah. you yeah. put it on the spoon and then you pop it in your mouth and then all the all the, the soup explodes in your mouth. Yeah, yeah it's good. And I then you suddenly that. realize it just came out of the wok and you've just burned the inside of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, you know. yeah, you put the spoon, put a little bit of soy sauce on there, and the little uh, what is the other stuff. And put that ginger, I think it is, the shivers, shivers of ginger and slivers, yeah. and then put that in there. Put that in. Yeah. Just be careful. It's hot. But, uh, yeah. So, you know. Uh, um, but the, Kathleen, uh, what were you laughing about? Well, when you guys started talking about politics and then you started talking about trains, I was on Spotify playing a Thomas the Tank Engine theme. Oh. That's the kid show, remember? Thomas the Train. <laughs> We used to buy those stuff for my nephew. Uh, uh, that's what we oh my god! He actually had the train. He actually had the table. We had to buy him. What a racket yeah. that show! Yeah, was. We, I mean, I should have bought stock in the company. But we're buying everything for his birthday. Was Thomas the Train? To show yep. you, by the way, to show you that this is a holiday weekend. We only have about thirty people watching us now, and usually we have about forty. I thought Phil was going to call you, Alex. I was going to say he would call you from the shooting range, but I guess he's not. No. No. He's lost. He is. Lo- I can't get over when you said that yesterday. <laughs> you said even Hitler's got a girlfriend. Phil does. Remember? <laughs> I was laughing. But no, it, but uh, he, yeah, he's went with his girlfriend. I know. I couldn't believe that when you isn't said that. that. I thought you were joking. Isn't that romantic? A romantic getaway? I was waiting for you to insult him. I said, "Oh my God, is he lying or telling the truth?" I thought it was funny. Uh, Kevin, isn't that a romantic getaway? Taking your girlfriend to a gun range. You know, I don't think Kevin heard me, actually. Did you hear me? I, I, she no, I lost Kevin. He never made it there. He might be still circling the trees, the cactus trees. Yeah. How do I get there again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but getting yeah. back getting back to Trump, I'm just as glad yeah. we haven't heard from him that much. Yeah. Every time we talk about Trump, our listener number drops. Well, you know what yeah. bothers me? i got to tell you something. Uh, no, there are two me? people. There's this uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Okay, who's a whack job who believes in all the QAnon conspiracies. Yeah, totally. Um, Really? But but she's a whack job. And then, of course, we've got Matt Gaetz, uh, who, uh, you know, I mean, he he has an eye for the youngins. He's still there. 
<laughs> and his, didn't his friend just snitch on him? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. But anyway, the point is that these people stay in the mainstream and are uh, uh, getting all this publicity because the left-wing media keeps talking about them. And if the left-wing media would just shut up about Matt Gates and about Marjorie Taylor Green, they would have no credence. But the reason they've got it is because these, uh, you know, the, the left-wing media is uh, talking about them all the time because they've got nothing to talk about. Is the left-wing media the Alex Bennett show like us? No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. No, <laughs> no. Here's the thing. If, if you, if, what is the advantage to talking about these two people? To begin with, the Matt Gates story is not an important story. It's a story of, a, it's a we gotcha story, okay? <laughs> and the Marjorie Taylor Greene is like shooting fish in a fucking barrel, all right? You don't need either of those stories. She's not important. She's more important now because the left-wing media has made her a star, Am I wrong, Josh? Am I am I uh, saying this thing all wrong? I mean, they certainly give her much more credit than she should be given, and you know the reason that her party will not admonish her is because they like the way that she says says you know stupid things because they know that the left wing media will then do what they do, and then she will raise a lot of money. And yeah. a lot of that money goes, you know, to their party because they'll raise money off of her as well. She will raise her own campaign money, and then they will send out letters and emails and all that, mm -hmm. you know, reminding everyone that, you know, they need your help and she needs your help to fight the, insert your phrase here, you know, socialist, this, that, the other. Well, isn't she, good at, ra isn't she good, yeah. good at raising money or something because of her notoriety? She's been very successful. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. you know. But uh, but if if that if the left wing media hadn't talked about her this much, would she have that ability? Probably not. No, she so would be really, a, 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 a congressman akin to many of our other congressmen who are not really that well known. Or so, in other words, she's a, really a product of Morning Joe. What are you doing? You know. And, so and is, others, so yeah. Is, I mean, so, so I mean they, they definitely talk about her entirely too much. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no doubt. Just like I told you last week, I'm fucking sick and tired of hearing about how oh, Trump is, is going to get indicted and there's going to go to... I mean, it's, first of all, it's not going to happen. And second of all, even if it fucking does, then tell me about it when it well, happens. It, the, I do the, not the, need I, I think the most 45 is, minutes yeah. of a, a day of being updated yeah. on some possible grand jury and I mean, I mean just shut the fuck up about it for a while no one i mean it, it it's like the fucking meteorologists are going to be more accurate with the fucking weather than all these goddamn people on msnbc all day talking about a possible criminal indictment for trump I mean, well what's going to know what to begin with if there is a criminal indictment against trump it's going to be against the trump organization and probably maybe. not against Trump. I mean, maybe. You don't know. I mean, they may have something or whatever. But you don't know because it's secret and it's early. So when they indict him, then come on the news and yeah, talk about but it. Don't, but don't go on every day and say, do you think yes, he's going to be spend, indicted? Oh. I mean, they spend a half an hour a day every fucking day talking about <laughs> that, in, I mean, that investigation. Yeah. Just yeah. like they did that. Russia investigation with Mueller and I mean it and then you know talk about air out of a fucking balloon I mean, <laughs> I, mean I mean this will be the same shit they will talk about that shit all the way up until the midterms and then it'll turn out to probably be nothing I mean look the fucking swarmy slimy fucking scumbag probably gonna get away with all of it okay not right but Let's move on and take care of the problems in our country you, that we can you, fix. You agree with that, Charlie? No. The Russian collusion has all been proven true. Trump lied his ass off for four years about colluding with the Russians. Yeah, but I don't disagree. I'm just saying, but, but whatever, whatever came of it. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 
Nothing. That Typical. Is, You're right, John. Because, I mean, because Nothing. Trump fucking stuck his uh, crony in as AG, and he fucked everything up for him, yeah. protected yeah. him. Well, we're, we're in the same place again. Mm -hmm. The Democrats need to concentrate on 2022, and they're forming committees that are unnecessary. Yeah. Why did they indict him a second time when they knew uh, indict him? Impeach him. Sorry, not indict. Impeach him a second time when they already knew he was out of office. What a waste of time. Yeah. Well, now, now, now Biden's going to By the way, I should office. I should say hello to somebody who has joined us, and that's Brian Ludwig, who we only see occasionally. Hello, Brian. Hello. How are you? Now, now Biden's wasting all, right. all his time. Wait, I'm talking. I'm talking to Brian. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So how are you, Brian? We haven't talked to you in a long time. I don't even see him. Uh, it's, uh, I'm just counting down the days until the end of the school year. Our, our last day is on June 11th. And all this, uh, our, and Pennsylvania's mask mandate is supposed to end, if I'm not mistaken, either on, now it's either June 28th <laughs> or until 70% of Pennsylvania citizens, of which I am one, have been fully vaccinated. Now it used to be until 70%. Now they changed it until whichever comes first, either the 70% or June 28th, mm -hmm. which tells me about the, uh, you know, about their conviction and their, and, and, you know, their inability to uh, plan this, this shit because they seem to be making it any more up as they go along. Right, right, right. And, and you're still driving kids to school yeah. and they're all wearing masks and you're wearing masks and they're Correct. all playing it safe. How do you, in the bus, do they sit in just uh, staggered seats now? Theoretically. What do you mean theoretically? What I mean by that is, uh, well, the uh, uh, high schoolers and the uh, middle schoolers tend to be good about that. Mm -hmm. uh, elementary, not so much. Uh, far like uh, zoo animals. They uh, <laughs> they do whatever the hell they want to, and there's only so much you can do, considering the fact that your primary attention is to be focused on the road and the conditions that occur on said road. Uh, so um, it's just, uh, we, we all just can't wait until June 12th. Now here's the beauty of this show, by the way. We are doing our program live. If, if you're watching it at, at 10.30 at night till uh, midnight and anything can happen on this show and right now trucker steve who's in his truck somewhere is folding his laundry and for the record josh <laughs> i fully agree with you um uh look at that he's, pa he's uh, can you hear us trucker steve i can hear you yeah what are you folding your your laundry is that it i went stuff away because i just got in got into the truck tonight Oh, I see. Okay, so you haven't even left uh, Canada in the truck. No. Uh, okay. And not, to enter, not to interrupt, but uh, uh, Tony, I'm glad to see you're on again, and my condolences. Oh, th thanks, Brian. Yeah, yeah. I heard about what it happened. It was a rough couple of months. I had cold weed my mom, and yeah, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, yeah. It, I, I, I think Tony's taking it beautifully. Yeah, I mean, I try to do like you said, Alex. I mean, I get upset sometimes, but I'm going to make the best of it, you know. Yeah, I'm but the, I mean, you had yeah. a very close relationship with your mother, you know, uh, especially when you had to clean up her poop and things like that. I know, that, it was a rough thing, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you, you had a, you know, uh, and I, so when she died, I thought you would be almost inconsolable, and I think you were calling us within two nights, you know. Yeah, you know, I thought about it. I mean, it's like, I was good, you know, because she leaned on me a lot. So not kind of like looking back. I didn't know how I would take it, but it happened so fast that when, she, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really didn't have time to prepare for it. Yeah. But how did, so you, feel, like how did you feel about the fact that your wife didn't show up for the funeral? You know, <laughs> if she thinks I'm going to any of those functions from the house line, she's got another thing coming. <laughs> Until I get us tickets to Comic-Con. <laughs> okay, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew. Man, we get right. fun. You know the I way mean, into Tony's heart, you, huh? You know, I mean, she should have been here, Alex. And I told my mother, she's in the other room. My mother didn't realize she wasn't here. Yeah. 
Isn't that hot? Yeah, that's hot, man. Yeah. Yeah, you just sound like you're Kathleen. Okay. Oh, that's I'm going crazy. to hell. <laughs> Might I understand that she's claiming the work? What? Your, wife, your ex-wife. Is it your ex-wife or your current? His I never knew you were married. Oh, he, 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 he he's, he's married. He's she's, married to the, she's married to the woman on the panel, Kathleen here. Oh, oh shit. Oh. What, but what you, mean, you, you know, shit. He could, he could have done worse. Exactly. <laughs> could have uh, married my mother, somebody like that. Feel like hell for what I. At least said. Kathleen lets me go out once in a while to the store. Totally. Yeah. But I got to be back at a certain time. Like she used to go to the uh, Where are you? Yeah. Um, I, to, I, kinda, I can't fly out of the store and shoplift. I got to pay for it. <laughs> She used to call me and stop for Jeff. Aren't you it's coming It's amazing how this show she goes back and forth time. between politics and comedy. I I, I, I don't know. Anytime I want to listen to comedy. arguing my mother and stop for Jeff. She couldn't hear me. I, I feel phone. like, you know, there was a great story about George Burns and Gracie Allen. The, the great thing about George is all he had to say to Gracie was, so tell yeah. me about your brother, Gracie. Oh, really? And then he would just stand back and she'd get the laughs. He said it was the easiest oh. act in the world to do. And I feel that when you're on, Tony, it's the easiest act I can do. I just say, so what about your wallpaper, Tony? And then I just sit back and I just... I thought just... about the wallpaper in the yeah. dark. I walked around the house. I looked at it. I said, what should we do in this room? And I laughed. What? You came tomorrow and said, you know what? I walked over. He's right. This doesn't match. It's horrible. <laughs> You were right. You know what you point. I nobody ever pointed it out. So we're probably afraid to tell. Um, uh, Kevin, do you have any uh, any uh, advice to give Tony about wallpaper? No, I don't use it. I don't either. Your mother was the last. In fact, in the does anybody really use wallpaper? Do you have wallpaper in your house, uh, Kathleen? No. How about you, uh, Kevin? Other. Uh, uh, I mean, excuse me. Uh, uh, Oh, Brian. Brian. No, we and, used to, but not anymore. Not you, but uh, but no. well, but that's fine. Either Brian could answer that. How about Brian Neary? No, no wallpaper. We just redid our house. No wallpaper. So no wallpaper in your house. No wallpaper in Kevin's house. How about your house, uh, Josh? Paint. Josh. Uh, there's a there's a real small amount in the kitchen. Uh, on the lower half. Obviously, there's no wallpaper over at John Larkin's. No well, wallpaper. Yeah, we got a half bathroom with half of the wall with oh, wallpaper. Oh, okay. It's coming down. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The way he said coming, it, he can't wait to rip down. it down. Uh, uh, yeah, Charlie it's Wallace. ripped. Uh, I keep ripping little pieces off of it, so it'll be coming down. Charlie Wallace, you don't have wallpaper, do you? No. No wallpaper at Allen's place? Yeah, I do. Oh, you got really? it? Really? In my bathroom, yeah, I got tired of looking Why at brown is it, or white. We, we do have a ten. People do have a tendency to put wallpaper in the bathroom. My mom had it there, Alex. Then she went to tiles. I remember. But no, kid. she had it everywhere, Tony. I know. <laughs> she, she still got yeah. She thought she had tape. God rest her soul. You know, God rest you know, her Tony, soul should, indeed. She better be up a little. And, and trucker, tru trucker Steve at home. Do you have wallpaper? <laughs> <laughs> our, our house, our house is nine years old. It's all paint. It's all paint. See, uh, see, Tony. That's the reason why. I think Tony should have lined. Now, how much of your of house, Tony? How much of your house is wallpaper, Tony? In the back, about my me and my brother's apartment, zero. Yeah, we ripped everything out. No, we I did mean, the whole first floor over, but this we didn't get to do upstairs. When did you do it? As soon as your mother died. No, actually, uh, when my father passed away, we uh, we ripped. We had the contractor come in and just got everything out because it was old. So we ripped everything up to oh, do okay. it new. All right. Except for that room, huh? <laughs> yeah, so the first floor is modern. Up here, it's still 1975. It's, no, it's still Psycho House. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I threw a bed out. Hey, I did Jeff, the Chinese you, people. You don't, have, you don't have any wallpaper, Jeff, right? Paint. Paint. Nothing but paint. paint. And glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we don't have any. No, I don't. We don't have a single inch of wallpaper in this apartment here. But if you want us, we'll put some up. Maybe right here would be very nice. <laughs> She's gonna start a trend from the grave, Alex. Yeah. Yes. I, I think wallpaper went out years ago. It just. I was gonna say. Yeah. I remember as a kid, she always used to have it. I mean, we still have it, really. I want to say early two thousands in my household. That's really? what kind of style. Really, I can't. 
<laughs> put I, a roll of toilet paper in their coffin. I mean, that wall. I should have put party. the wallpaper in there, but I couldn't even have the heart to do it. Oh. I put lifesavers in, but she was always making me buy them for her. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I mean, don't I, leave without the life savers. I just have to run back to stop it. Oh, fuck. Well, I guess you can have nice wallpaper. <laughs> never sleep if she doesn't have these. Okay, calm down, Tony. Okay, yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah, I got to snap back. You can be like my psychiatrist. Then I go back to the Tony one. show is yeah. over now. Okay, it's right. time for you. Now, take now, 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 music, now music from John Larkin, ladies and gentlemen. A little house on the prairie. <laughs> she was like. Michael Landon. Now, He's a chick uh, nice. now, now music from the uh, from from uh, John Larkin. Go ahead, John. <laughs> uh, John Boy. John wants a new segment. Wait. Name a scale. I can play any scale. You can play, you can play, you can play any scale. Yep. The There's Walkins. only one scale. There's not. There's tons da, da, of scales. Da, da, da. What? There's tons of scales. There's minor scales, melodic oh, minor. Oh, wow. I weigh too much minor. on the scale. Okay, give me a mi <laughs> minor. Sharp five, you know. Give five. me a minor scale. Go ahead. Give me a minor scale. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. What do you mean, wait? You're not supposed to talk while you're blowing into the harmonica. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, you got to put me on all uh, too much pressure. I don't want to. Okay, well, now we're going to have some music from. Uh, are you going to pull out your guitar, uh, Trucker Steve? Maybe the two of you can have a duet together. Money and shit. How long have you had that harmonica, John? There's a there's a minor scale right there. Okay, but how long have you had that? How how long? How um, long have you had that harmonica? A couple months. Well, you're certainly coming along. <laughs> Thank you. Can you play at the funeral? And and now of <laughs> course more. we have. Thanks for tuning in to KBLO. Put a tip on my mom's <laughs> coffee. <laughs> what are you playing? KBLO. Yeah, let me see. Home of, home of the three <laughs> note harmonica players. Okay, now wait a minute. How much longer do we have before it's gonna? This is a chromatic. I can chromatic plays any note. It's a you know. Yeah. As opposed to like. Uh, those cost. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how much do they cost? Uh, Kevin this one. Mm -hmm. This probably um, I bought it used from a uh, from a uh, pawnbroker, but brand new it'd be about three hundred bucks. Really? How much? Wow. You, well, how much you buy it for? One hundred and fifty. 150. Okay. Did you sterilize it? Yeah, really. Yeah, I was thinking it came with somebody else's uh, spit already pre installed. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, That's know. gross, John. <laughs> Let's see, Truck and Steve, do you have your guitar? It's like buying somebody's used handkerchief. <laughs> Probably true. Well, wait a minute. We're trying to see if Trucker Steve has his guitar. Uh, here we go. There we uh, go. Oh. You can do better than uh, John Larkin did. Come on, play us a tune. How about doing banjos? No, you don't do that on the guitar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 guitar and harmonica. <laughs> Squeal like a pig. Well, I was going to have... <laughs> or Ned, baby. <laughs> I was going to have uh, uh, John play his uh, uh, harmonica while <laughs> Trucker Steve played his guitar, and then okay. M Kathleen could sing. Wait, I got a fart coming up. No. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Oh, here we go. Now he's getting oh, out his amp. Oh, damn. By the time you know, by the time that thing warms up, it'll be next week. We're going to be off the air. Well, now here's, here's, here's John. Hey, John. Okay. Your here. stepfather says hello. Okay, John. Go. Go. Uh, go, John. John. He's got the acoustic. Nice. <laughs> Sounds chink, right, Tony? Uh, uh, talent abounds on tonight's program. I don't know I what you're doing. Get over here. You're funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an Irish wig. 
It says Trey. He says, somebody here says Trekker Steve looks like a serious axe player. Are you a serious guitar <laughs> player, uh, Steve? Not really. I just started, so I don't really know how to play yet. Oh, okay. So, but you do know how to hook it up. I haven't even taken lessons. I have to take lessons. Oh. Okay, well, it needs, uh, John, you wouldn't know it, but John hasn't taken any lessons, and who would have known? <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, no. oh, that's good. Now a clarinet. <laughs> oh, okay. Brian, Brian. That thud on the ground that we just heard was well, your Brian neighbor. Neary has a ukulele. <laughs> play, play the yeah. ukulele for us, Brian Neary. Did I sound good? Did it look like I was doing something? Because I don't know how to play it. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> it, was my, it was my grandfather's. So. Oh, really? One of those things you can't get rid of. Now the other neighbor's jumping out. Listening to John reminds me that uh, Artie Shaw is dead. Huh? <laughs> Artie Shaw. Oh, yeah. Artie Artie Shaw, he was a great fucking player. Man. He was a great clarinet player. You know, if you have bed bugs, you can always call John Larkin. He'll play instruments. They'll run. <laughs> yeah. It actually sounded pretty good, though, John. Give me yeah. I thought so. Josh doesn't me. have anything to play. Kevin doesn't have anything to play. I don't. Do I have an instrument here? No. I really don't. <sighs> yeah. I, get, I take lessons on YouTube. There's lots of great lessons. Mm -hmm. You can yeah, do, I, you know, you can do anything on YouTube. I, uh, you can yeah, exactly. find anything you want on YouTube. Except yeah. defend Palestine. Except what? <laughs> Except defend Palestine and not expect to get demonetized. For yeah, it. well, you'll hear me defend Palestine here. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, I'm, I'm, is a noise you don't hear every day? What? What, what, do you, what are you doing? It's a fart noise on a music making thing oh, I don't geez. Oh, are we getting to that well listen we have one minute left anybody else want to contribute something uh, nope. yeah not, uh, what we'll do is we'll have we have one minute left Josh in a minute can you uh, can you give us a complete history of the Supreme Court <laughs> not really no uh, okay go to us uh, okay. Steve are you taking lessons on the internet no. I've tried, but they go too fast for me to keep Those up. Those guys, the people who try to describe stuff on the internet are not very good broadcasters because they go so fast that you can't follow them. You just can't. Yeah, they're yeah. Showing the, uh, go to, um, what's his name? Marty. Marty Music. He's a great guitar teacher. It's free, too. Really? Apparently, it hasn't worked so far for you. <laughs> oh, that's cold. Yeah, well, set up. Oh no, uh, he's wrong. gonna try again. I better play the theme just to Yeah, play the theme, Larkin. Come on. Yeah, play our you're theme. So good, John. Play our themes are so good. Come on, John, that sounds all right. Anyway, boy, this has been This is our Memorial Day weekend show, folks. This is what Extravaganza. Oh, yeah. This is what you get. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hey, let's uh, give a big uh, goodbye to Alan, and let's say goodbye to Trucker Steve, uh, who is still in Canada, I imagine. Uh, also, Charlie Doctor. Wallace, thank you. Thank you to Josh. Um, good talking with you. Of course, the uh, lovely and attractive John Larkin, a man of many, 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 many a talent. Uh, Jeff, who is just a delight. I love Jeff. Uh, Tony. Stop sending me messages, okay, yeah. on Facebook. <laughs> Blink, and he's got like 20 messages. Uh, also, thanks to Kevin, and thanks to, of course, Mrs. Uh, 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 Magno. Oh, my uh, mother would be so proud. Thank you to Brian Neary. And, uh, oh, boy, we got ready. Kevin hung up as soon as I said goodbye to him. Uh, uh, and goodbye to Brian Ludwig. Uh, have thank a good you Memorial all. Day. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's our, uh, our, our, our guys and woman for tonight, our panel, citizen panel. That's it. Wow. 
Uh, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be taking calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Meanwhile, we will be back again on Monday with a little pop-up show. I'm going to give it a try on Memorial Day. The pop-up show. We'll be back here for the regular show on uh, Tuesday, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And, and by the way, please get vaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, at least wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, I'm going to come out and get you. Anyway, stay safe, everybody, and have a great Memorial Day weekend. Bye.